TunesUnlimited.com. Hi everyone, I'm Janelle with Tunes Unlimited, and today we're going to go over how you can import a PNG sequence uh, file inside Crazy Talk Animator to create an animated prop. Now, what I mean by PNG sequence, um, this is a quick video I did a while back, and the bird's wings are multiple sprites in series to create this flapping animation. These items is not something that you can animate correctly in Crazy Talk Animator. Sometimes you need to draw multiple sprites to get the, the look that you want. And for people who are just doing your regular props, um, there's going to come a time where you want your character or your design, your project to have more. And when it gets to that, this is when the PNG sequence in the um, SWF um, animated props will come into play. So I'm going to bring up Crazy Talk Animator. Okay, so with the door, once again, there are four different sprites to make this animation. One, I want the door closed. I will want the door open, and then I will want animation of the door opening as well as animation of the door closing. So with all those four sprites, it will be, it will control how I want this door to interact for animation. And then finally, there is the, the fire. And this one was done differently. This was done with a PNG sequence. And what I mean by that, if I hit play, it does absolutely nothing. But I have a recorded script that now it will animate. So that's what we're going to work on today. A PNG sequence. How, how, how would I get a PNG sequence inside of Crazy Talk Animator? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. And I am going to bring up my folder. So this is my folder that has my fire PNG sequence. And as you can see, it's only 24 frames, but together it will do the fire animation that I, that I want. The first thing you would do is just simply drag frame one inside of Crazy Talk Animator and create it as a prop. Next, go ahead and go into um, the composer mode. Select your flame, well, select your object, and go ahead into the sprite editor. Here is where I will simply delete this frame again. Why? Because when I import the PNG sequence, I want them all to be imported at once at the same um, location. Sometimes when you're doing them manually, they kind of shift and they bounce around, and I want them to import in the exact same spot. So I go ahead and hit the add a new sprite. And as you can see, I'm back in my fire folder and everything is in order. It's, it's nothing for me to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all and hit open and it brings them all in. Now the only issue I have with this method, and it all depends on how complex your PNG sequence is, is as you can see, it has renamed my, um, my, my naming convention for the fire. So instead of fire one, two, three, it's going fire one, 20, 31. I have no idea why it does that. If you really needed to have the correct, correct name, you can double click on it and start to, you know, take off the extra numbers that it has added to it. But other than that, it has imported in order and it will allow you to do your PNG sequence. So from here, everything that I need is already in Crazy Talk Animator. It's already in the order that I want. They're all the same size. I can go ahead and go out of the composer mode and go back to the stage. Let's get started. This is the fire, and I'm going to go ahead and select it and go into the sprite editor. 
And now I have to create that animation manually. And how I would do it is for each frame, I will go to the next sprite. And I'm going to do it for all 24 of my frames. Okay, so I have um, sprites for my animation and I've done my 24 frames. And now I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the timeline and I can see there's my entire animation right there for my fire. I want to go ahead and collect the clip. So I'm going to start from frame one, hold my mouse key down and select all 24 of those frames, right click, and I'm going to hit add to action menu and I'm going to call it flame animation. And now it's here as a flame animation. And the beauty, the beautiful thing about that is let me go ahead and go back to frame one and I'm going to delete any type of animation. When I right click now, it will go instantly into its flame animation. And if I bring up the timeline and go under motion, I can see my flame animation. From here, I can control the speed. I can make it go very slow and just stretch this out. And it will play like this. Or I can make it go very fast. And of course, you can loop it. So make it go fast and let me just keep on letting it loop for a while. And there you have it. Now I will say the PNG sequence is something that is more likely to be used if you have, in my case, I wanted my fire to have a blur effect. I didn't want it to be just a, a vector image. So if I put this to a background, it has a much stronger effect to it. Okay, so as you can see, here's a nice scene. This flame is definitely doing its thing. It's a vector flame and it's it's got its own animation going on there. But I could I could add my flame to it and reduce it to its size. I'm gonna just put it in the front so you can see it a little bit better. But I can add my flame to it and tell it to do its animation. And once again, if you wanted it to loop for a while, just go to the motion. and just let it play out. So that's a good reason to use a PNG sequence. Blur, blur effects and um, lighting, you know, fire, they tend to um, not import well in Crazy Talk Animator using an SWF format. So if you know you have special effects that um, Crazy Talk Animator won't like, saving it as a PNG sequence is a very good alternative to get your animation in and still get um, this exact same effect that you want. The biggest thing to be concerned with, of course, is the file size. In this case, um, because it's just a simple flame, the file size is not that large. So it's, you know, six megs, it's not that large. However, if you know that you're working on a really big project, then you may want to do um, some alternatives where you might Im import it as a video um, just to get a smaller file size and for the, the, the software to handle the, the performance much better. And if you're selling content, Another solution you can do, because some people have Mac and some people have um, your PC, is just to save them in both formats. Do a do a video 
format for the Mac and do a video format for the PC and sell them um, together. And then that way, no matter what, your customer will have the right option that will work for their computer. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions regarding um, importing a PNG sequence, just leave a, um, a comment below and I will try to get back and answer any of your questions. Until then, take care. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you would like to purchase any of my products, head over to my store where I sell characters, props, and scenes. Stay tuned for the next video and take care.